click the bell icon to turn on notifications. Let's move on now to seeing how we can make our formulas a little bit simpler and uh, more readable, easier for everybody to understand. And that is by using named ranges instead of cell references in our formulas. So each time that we've constructed a formula so far, we've been selecting a range of cells. We've been using the range. For example, I'm clicked in cell F4, which is showing me the total. If we look in the formula bar at the top, you can see it's doing a sum D4 multiplied by E4. I'm using cell references in here. But what I could do is I could use ranges instead. So, for example, in this little table, you can see I have a few different columns. I have an order number column, I have a customer column, a quantity column, price per unit, and then a total column. And I need to complete this little table over here. And the first one that I want to complete is I want to find what the average order is in monetary terms. So I basically want to find out the average of this total over here. Now, I could type in average as we've seen before. I could then select this range, F4 to F7, and that's going to give me the correct answer. What if I have a very, very long list of numbers? Do I want to keep having to go in and select the range each time? That can be a little bit time consuming. Well, a way that I can make this a lot easier is to name my range instead. So what I could do is name this entire column. So I'm going to select the total column. I'm going to jump up to that formulas tab and in the middle here we have a defined names group. And what I'm going to say is create from selection. So it's going to create a range and I'm going to use the name in the top row of this selection, so in this case total, as the name for the range. So let's click on OK. Now, when you create named ranges in Excel, you can find them all the way over in this little name box. If I click the drop down, you can see there it's going to show me any named ranges I have set up. So not only can I use named ranges in formulas, I can also use them for navigation reasons as well. So if I'm clicked off somewhere over here on the spreadsheet and I want to quickly jump back to these totals, I could from the drop down select total and it's going to move me back to that area. Now, we've gone off on a little bit of a tangent there because what we want to do is use this range in this formula. So what I could do now is I could type in equals average open bracket. Instead of selecting the cell range, I can just start to type in the name of the range. So if I start to type in total, you'll see Excel's IntelliSense has at the top of the list. It's showing me there is my named range. I can double click to select it close the bracket, hit enter, and it gives me the correct answer. So now when I look at this formula, it's a lot easier to read. It's a lot easier for anybody looking at this formula to understand exactly what I'm finding the average of. I'm finding the average of that total column. It's also a lot more efficient for you. As I said, if you have lots of numbers and you don't want to keep selecting them, create named ranges and use those in your formulas. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create named ranges for all of the other columns in this little table. So this is really quick to do. All I need to do is highlight all of the data, including those column headings, go back up to my named ranges and say create from selection. I want to use the top row as the names for my ranges and click on OK. I'm going to make sure that those have been set up by checking to make sure that they're now in this named ranges drop down, which they are. I have order, price per unit, quantity and total. So now I can use any of these in my calculations. So my next calculation, I want to find the number of orders. So because I'm finding I want to count the number, I'm going to use the count formula. Let's type in count, open brackets. Again, I could select the range, but because I've given it a name and that name is order, I can just start to type it in. I can see it there in the menu because it's currently selected. I can press the tab key, close the bracket, hit enter. and There I get my result. Now, another way that I could do this is I could use the F3 key to pull up all of my named ranges. So if you can't remember the name of any named ranges that you've selected and you want to use them, you can just press F3 and it's going to show you a list of all of your named ranges.
So for this next one, I want to find the minimum sale. So I want to look through all of these totals and I want to know what the minimum value is. So for this, we're going to use another one of those basic formulas. We're going to type in min, open the bracket, and I could press the F3 key at this stage. It's going to bring up all of the named ranges that I've created, and I can then choose which one I want to use. So I'm looking for the minimum sales value in the totals column. Click total, close off that bracket, hit enter. Okay, so nice and straightforward. And of course, I could carry on going. I want to find the maximum sales. Again, from the totals column, I can just type it in, or I can press that F3 key. You get the idea. All right, so using named ranges, one of my biggest tips when it comes to working with formulas. Now, moving on, let's take a look at just one very quick example of how we can combine formulas together. So we've looked at all of those basic formulas. We've used them. We've had a little play around with them. We've seen how we can combine them with named ranges. But what about if we want to combine formulas together? Because the beauty of formulas is that they can be extremely simple, like sum, adding up a list of numbers, or you can combine lots of different functions together to make a really long, complex formula that does some really fancy and whizzy things. Now, obviously, all of that is going to be a little bit more advanced than the stage that we're at at the moment, but I do just want to show you how you can start to combine formulas together to produce a different result. So what we're going to do here is, again, we have a little table. We have the names of some salespeople. And then we have, again, some sales results for Q1 to Q4. And I want to work out the bonus for each of these salespeople. And I can see underneath I have a little bit of instructional text. So it's telling me each salesperson gets a bonus of 10% of their highest sales for the quarter. So basically, I need a formula that's going to look through all of the sales for each salesperson, find the maximum value, and then work out what 10% of that is, because that's going to be the bonus. Okay. So if we just do this visually, because I've only got a little bit of data, if we look at the, the uh, values for Claire, for example, I can see very clearly that the total in Q1 is the highest sales value for Claire. So she uh, did the most sales for Q1. Now, 10% of that is going to be around 797. So that would be the ex that would be the answer that I'm looking for with this formula. Okay, so how do we construct this? Because we need to use two formulas. I need to use the first formula, max, to work out what the maximum value is in my selected range. But then I want to work out what 10% of that is. And we're going to use a sum formula for that. So we're combining max and sum. So let's click in bonus. We're going to type in equals to start of our formula. Now, the first, func first function I need to type is sum. And open my bracket and straight away we go into our max function. So we're going to type in max. Now notice here, I'm now working in the max function. If I delete that out for a moment, when I open a bracket for sum, it gives me the arguments for sum. So I'm now in my sum function. Okay. If I start to type in another formula, oops, and open a bracket, I'm now in that formula instead. So I wanted to do the max first. The first thing I wanted to do is work out what the maximum value is in the cell range. So I'm going to select my cell range. Now, that's all I wanted to do. So I'm going to close off my bracket. Now notice that once I close off that bracket, I'm essentially closing off that max formula. So Excel then takes me back out to finish completing my sum formula. And you can see now it's asking me for my arguments for sum. So I wanted to find the maximum value and then I want it to multiply by 10%. So all I need to do here is say multiply by, and I am going to hard code this in, for this particular one. And then I need to close off my sum formula. Another important thing to remember when you're combining formulas is that the number of brackets or parentheses that you open within a formula, you must close off the same amount of brackets or your formula is not going to work. So I opened two brackets and I've closed two brackets. Hit enter and I now get my result. I can then copy that down using my autofill handle. And if we do a quick visual check of a couple of these, I can see that they are correct. So let's say for myself, 
the maximum value in here is going to be Q3. And I can see that, yes, that is 10% of that value. OK, so just be aware of that format when you're combining functions together. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To see the full course that this video came from, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.